In today's Medico Apps Masterclass, we will learn and review Streptococcus pyogenes. Let's start with the morphology. Strep pyogenes is a gram positive cocci found in chains and belong to group A according to Lancefield classification. Strep pyogenes can divide only in one plane, hence they form chain structure. As compared to Staph aureus, which can divide in three plates and hence form grape-like structure. Coming to the biochemical characteristic, Staph pyogenes is bacitracin sensitive and PYR positive. In fact, PYR test is used in presumptive diagnosis for group A streptococci. It is both catalase negative and CAMP negative. The catalase test is used to differentiate between other gram positive, uh, catalase positive like Staph aureus and CAMP test is used to differentiate between group A streptococci and group B streptococci. So catalase positive gram positive cocci would be Staph aureus, catalase negative gram positive cocci will be step pyogenes. Similarly CAMP negative will be group A streptococci and CAMP positive will be group B streptococci. Moving forward, ribose is not fermented by step pyogenes. Let's see the cultural characteristic. Step pyogenes requires media with fermentable carbohydrate or serum or blood and its growth and hemolysis is promoted by 10% carbon dioxide. The capsulated form are virulent and produce matte and mucoid colonies as you can see whereas non-capsulated form are avirulent and produces glossy colony. So for strep pyogenes, uh, the virulence depends upon whether the capsule is present or not. If it is non-capsulated, it is avirulent and uh, this is the kind of colony they will uh, form, glossy colony. And if they are capsulated, they are virulent, they will either form uh, a mucoid colony or that same mucoid colony can have a matte appearance later on. Let's move forward to the antigenic structure of strep pyogenes. In antigenic structure, we will see three different components. First is the hair-like pillar, which helps in the attachment to epithelial cells. Then cell wall. Cell wall, the inner layer is of peptidoglycan. The middle layer is carbohydrate. The middle layer, that is the carbohydrate layer, is also used in Lancefield classification and according to Lancefield classification, strep pyogenes belong to group A. And finally, the outer layer. The outer layer is made of proteins and lipotoic acid, the M protein and TNR. M protein is used in Griffith classification and it decides the virulence. Basically, M factor inhibits the phagocytosis and antibodies against M pro is protective, whereas T and R have no relation to virulence. Moving to polysaccharide, group A streptococci elaborate various degree of polysaccharide capsule composed of hyaluronic acid. Capsular polysaccharides plays an important role protecting group A streptococci from ingestion by and killing by phagocytosis. The capsular polysaccharide plays an important role also in colonization in the pharynx by binding to CD44 expressed on human epithelial cells. And it is a very weak immunogen, so antibodies against polysaccharide is not protective. So key points here is M proteins is very important for virulence. It is found in the outer layer and it inhibits phagocytosis. It's also uh, the antibodies against M protein is protective. Whereas the you know polysaccharide capsule that is made up of various degree of hyaluronic acid is important in protection from phagocytosis and important in colonization in pharynx. Whereas antibodies against the polysaccharide capsule is not protective. Moving forward, let's look at the antigenic similarity between streptococcus pyogenes and human cells. The capsular hyaluronic acid is antigenically similar to synovial fluid. The outer cell wall protein is antigenically similar to myocardium. 
middle wall is similar to cardiac valves the inner cell wall is similar to skin antigen and the cell membrane of streptococcus pyogenes is similar to the vascular intima let's move forward to toxins and virulence factor one of the first important toxin is hemolysin or streptolysin it is of two types oxygen labile and oxygen stable also known as serum stable they are represented by the letter o and s asotitis that is anti streptolysin o titer is used in retrospective diagnosis of strep pyogenes infection especially pharyngitis where the titer is more than 200 Let's look at some of the differences between oxygen labile hemolysin and oxygen stable or serum soluble hemolysin. Oxygen labile is antigen specific, oxygen stable is non antigenic. Oxygen labile activity on the pore plate, oxygen stable hemolysis on surface and oxygen labile is cardiotoxic and oxygen stable is non cardiotoxic. Uh, a simple way to remember will be stable is non cardiotoxic so it is s it is safe also it is non antigenic again it is s or safe and hemolysis is seen on the surface again it is s so the word letter s can help you remember the three features of oxygen stable moving forward the second toxin is pyogenic exotoxin or tick or scar scar moving forward the second toxin is pyogenic exotoxin or dick or scartenial toxin also known as erythrogenic toxin which is a super antigen causing toxic shock syndrome dick test is an intradermal test to identify susceptible children now the reaction in this case is called schulz carton reaction there are three subtypes the most common type is type a type a and tap type b are coded by bacteriophage while type c is encoded by chromosome a streptokinase also known as fibrinolysin it facilitates spread of infection and produced by serotype a c and k deoxyribonuclease or also called as streptodornase is responsible for the thin serous character of strep exudates spilep is a serine protease that cleaves and inactivates interleukin 8 and helps in inhibiting the neutrophil recruitment interleukin 8 actually is the interleukin which is responsible for neutrid for neutrophil recruitment at any site of infection or injury but spilep is a serine protease which cleaves and inactivates interleukin 8 thereby inhibiting neutrophil recruitment at the site of infection hyaluronidase it favors spread of infection serum opacity factor it is a lipoproteinase and finally nicotinamide adenine dinucleotidase that is nadas clinical manifestation sore throat is the most common stre streptococcal infection scarlet fever is streptococcal pharyngitis with rash with minute papules which gives the skin a sand paper skin appearance so there are very small papules with rash which gives the skin a sand paper appearance also in scarlet fever you can see circumolar pallor and strawberry tongue so these images actually illustrate the strawberry tongue and the circumolar pallor so if you remember this diagram so you can remember the circumolar pallor and sand paper appearance of the skin and strawberry tongue also the soft tissue infections impetigo mainly by group a streptococci most commonly seen on legs and faces now you can have non bullous and bullous bullous impetigo is generally caused by staph aureus non bullous impetigo is generally caused by streptococci cellulitis most commonly by st uh, streptococci pyogenes can also be caused by staph clostridium and e coli so this is a more uh, uh, severe infection in which the subcutaneous tissue is also involved erypsilis uh, it's similar to cellulitis but it's restricted to cheeks and face and the nasal bridge and because the lymphatics are involved it uh, gives a pewd orange texture so here you can see the pewd orange texture 
now uh, dif- there are so many differences between cell- uh, cellulitis and erep cells mostly the location it's generally found in legs this is generally limited to you know cheeks and nasal bridge also this is more self limiting this if not treated may further lead to necrosis and uh, moving forward the l- most severe is necrotizing fasciitis which is caused by group a streptococci also called as hemolytic streptococci gangrene skin infections the aso titer are not high and so estimation is of no significance this is very important that aso titers are only increased or mostly increased in pharyngeal infections not in skin or soft tissue infections genital infections anaerobic streptococci are most important cause of puerperial sepsis bacteremia pneumonia and toxic shock syndrome and finally two non separative complications these non separative complications generally happen 1 to 3 week after the infection and there are two types basically acute rheumatic fever and acute glomerulonephritis now acute rheumatic fever is seen post throat infection of any serotype whereas acute glomerulonephritis is seen with specific serotypes 1 12 49 53 to 55 and 59 to 64 in acute rheumatic fever repeated attacks are common whereas in acute glomerulonephritis it is not seen so penicillin prophylaxis is indicated in acute rheumatic fever whereas in acute glomerulonephritis penicillin prophylaxis is not indicated the course may be progressive or static is in acute rheumatic fever whereas in acute glomerulonephritis it's generally a self limiting aso titers are raised in acute rheumatic fever whereas in acute glomerulonephritis if it is a skin infection uh, acu- uh, it may not be raised if it is a throat it may be raised finally there is a marked immune response but the complement level does not change in acute glomerulonephritis the response rate is moderate but it's also there is a decreased level of complement coming to the lab diagnosis acute pharyngitis swab culture is gold standard the transport media is spikes media and sleep blood agar is recommended as it is inhibitory to hemophilus hemolyticus acute rheumatic fever and acute glomerulonephritis can be diagnosed with a retrospective aso increase in aso titers more than 200 in acute glomerulonephritis with pyoderma anti dna is and anti hyaluronidase is used for respective diagnosis a streptozyme test is a passive hemagglutination test which is specific and sensitive for all streptococcal infections the management includes penicillin in case of pharyngitis impetigo erepsials and cellulitis penicillin along with empyema drainage if there is empyema on formation on pneumonia penicillin with clindamycin and surgical debridement in case of necrotizing fasciitis or myositis and penicillin with clindamycin and iv immunoglobulin in case of toxic shock syndrome this completes the review of strep pyogenes Thank <music> you.